Autumn? Oh, hey. Winter? Wow, that was weird. Autumn? Hey, it stop that. Winter? Come on, man, just pick one. Autumn? This hurts. Winter? Why do you hate me? Mm, yeah, winter's good. No, wait, autumn. Ah! Ladies, gentlemen, and trainers of all ages, there is something lovely about Pokemon as a franchise. Of course, it is just an enjoyable creature collecting game with a ton of mechanical depth and fun stories to progress through, but there is something special about the sheer amount of detail. All of the little things that the game is absolutely full of that make the atmosphere of just walking around feel amazing, even if you don't know each little thing that it is that makes you feel that way. That said, no matter how many hours you have in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, it is unlikely that you'll know every little thing about the game, and so today, once again, we'll be diving into another seven things you didn't know about in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. This ranges from everything from fun little details that are just neat to point out to the community and share with everyone, to tips and tricks that can actually help you out on your journey along through the game. So strap in and get ready as we begin, first off with a fun, unique interaction. Pretty much all Pokemon work the exact same way when it comes to spawning and despawning within the game. They pop in when you're in range of them, they pop out when you walk away from them. But there is one one particularly notable exception to this. Sandy Ghast, the pile of sentient ghostly sand. Under most circumstances, this still works exactly how you'd expect it to do. It just comes in and out of existence as you get close and walk away. However, if you specifically happen to come across a Sandy Ghast when it is raining, or if you sit there staring at one for an hour and a half until it starts to rain like me because I'm a totally sane human being who makes good decisions with my life, you will notice something different happen. When you start to walk out of the range of the Sandy Ghast while it is raining around you, instead of just popping out of existence, they will actually slowly and very sadly melt right in front of your eyes. I'm melting! It's just a neat bit of flavor, a little bit of unnecessary detail stuck into the game that makes it feel just that little bit more alive. After that, let's talk about Shinies. A favorite pastime of many trainers out there is shiny hunting, looking for specific Pokemon with noticeable color changes, and while it can be quite the process to actually find the specific Pokemon you're after in a shiny version, after all, by default, the odds are 1 in 4,000 or so to to spawn, and it has never actually been easier before than it is to hunt for shinies in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We've talked about plenty of shiny hunting methods on the channel before, but of course, the hunt is never complete. Today we've got one specific little location where you can make Pokemon spawn obscenely quickly and easily, and thus it makes the shiny hunt very easy for the ones that can spawn there. First up, head to the Million Volt Skyline fast travel point just west of Lavincia, and then head north and drop down to find this tiny little cave. Walk over to the back of the cave and you can actually set up a picnic right here in the corner. From here it's time to eat a shiny sandwich, and when you do, when you pop out of the picnic, Pokemon will just start falling out of the wall in front of you in droves. This is just where they spawn within this cave, and it makes it really easy to keep an eye on them and know whether they are shiny or not. Then either set up a picnic table again to reset the spawns, or simply throw out your party leader in let's go mode, and you can defeat them one at a time pretty much non-stop in line with the respawn timer to keep these respawns flowing, and then eventually you will get a shiny to pop in. Specifically, this works for five Pokemon in this little cave. Diglett if you eat a ground sandwich, Salandit if you eat a poison sandwich, Young Goose if you eat a normal sandwich, Makuhita if you eat a fighting sandwich, or Car coal if you eat a rock sandwich. Essentially, this is just a hyper-efficient version of the isolated encounter method that only works in this one specific spot for these specific Pokemon, but hey, it works so it's really nice to be aware of. Next up today, let's talk about time resetting. There are a number of reasons you would want the day to move forward in the Pokemon world, resetting Terra Raids, resetting set spawn Pokemon, and of course resetting your mass outbreaks, among other things. For the most part, this process is relatively simple, though if you reset the way most people do, you may well look at the date and time on your Switch and see that it's at least a couple of weeks off of the actual date, and probably a few hours off the actual time too. However, there is an easier way to reset every single one of these things, and it is very simple. It actually messes with your date and time far less as well, so you can still use your switch time as a somewhat accurate clock rather than it being the 65th minute of the 74th hour of June 25th, 2043. Quite simply, when you go to do your time reset, just push it back one minute. Pushing it back one minute makes the game believe it is a full new day, as time can't physically go backwards normally, and so you get all of your resetting goodness. Again, just move the time back by one minute rather than by a day or by setting it to midnight, just backwards by one singular minute, and then the reset will happen easy as pie. I, I don't get that phrase. Pie is actually really hard to make, and there are far easier things to eat. Why is pie easy? 
After, after that, let's talk a bit about Terra Raids and their rewards. We all know how lucrative these can be, especially at the higher levels, giving you the incredibly useful things like bottle caps, Herba Mystica, even ability patches and capsules, which are rare as hell otherwise. They also give you tons of other goodies, but did you know that there is a difference in the rewards that you get, depending on whether you are the host or someone who joins a multiplayer raid? The host and single player rewards are the same, of course, and well, a lot of the important things, stuff like Herba Mystica, bottle caps, ability patches, and capsules are synced for all players who take part in the raid. But as a result of all the rest of these things being synced no matter what, you may not have noticed that the rewards are actually a bit different for the host than they are for the people who join from the outside. This one was revealed in a tweet from Joe Merrick, who is the webmaster of Cerebi.net, so you know, quite the influential guy, definitely knows his stuff about Pokemon, and he says if you are the raid's host, you will actually get more Terra Shards in your rewards than anyone else who joins, whereas if you join the raid externally, you will get more of the Pokemon-specific materials than the host does. Specifically, this returns to the things that you use to make TMs and such. Not a massive deal, but a neat little detail that's nice to know, especially if you are going out of your way to hunt either Terra Shards or Pokemon materials. Then we have another cool detail about the game related to a Pokemon known as Sawsbuck. This is the evolution of Deerling, and ever since its introduction in Generation 5, it has had seasonal forms that change the way that it looks pretty significantly. Originally, in Gen 5, these seasonal forms were tied to the actual seasons in real life. Winter would be the form for the winter months, summer the form for the summer months, etc. It would be tied to real life time. However, as it went on into future games, the Pokemon stopped changing forms and was sort of locked exclusively to spring mode unless you traded it over from an older game. This was pretty sad for Sawsbuck enthusiasts, but I've got some great news for you about Scarlet and Violet. In this current gen, you can once again change the form of Sawsbuck, and it is way easier and more interesting to do so than it has ever been before. Now, instead of being based on the time of the year or just being locked to being stuck in one form forever, the form of your Sawsbuck is instead based around the location you load into the game from the main menu with one in your party. If you load into an area the game counts as winter, you get the winter Sawsbuck until you close the game again. The same happens in the spring areas, the summer areas, the autumn areas. So you actually get to choose your Sawsbuck form pretty manually and very reliably. Next up, let's talk about Sunflora. That's clearly a flower. Specifically, due to this tweet by Pearl Enthusiast, we know about a little tiny artboard snuck into a corner of Mezagosa, just down these stairs from the Academy. It's sucked in real tight, so you can easily be forgiven for not noticing, but hey, it's there. And clearly it's not just your average Sunflora, it is much more extravagant, much more flowing. Hell, you can even argue, maybe it's an evolution yet to come. Yes, it's possible this is actually a little hint or Easter egg at a potential future evolution for Sunflora, but it is arguably equally possible that this is just a fun little artist rendition of Sunflora itself, and they've just stuck it here because they can. After all, there are all kinds of advertising based around the Pokemon just littered throughout the Paldea region, and this could be one of those, but it could also be a hint at an evolution, and that's what makes it worth talking about. Then finally today, we have another interesting location to visit that will give you some fun rewards for your journey. A couple of times before in this series, we have talked about the interesting trichotomy of fire, water, and grass moves. Of course, these are the three types that always apply to our starters, but there is usually a more interesting connection between these types within the greater game as well. And specifically in Scarlet and Violet, there are multiple locations where you can find a fire, water, and grass TM of an extremely similar move about five feet apart from each other. Today we're going to be heading to Glaciado Mountain, specifically to this little cave located here. Just drop onto the grassy area from the snow above and then you'll see the cave itself. Inside of it are the TM's Blast Burn, Hydro Cannon, and Frenzy Plant. Every one of these is a copy of the exact same move, but for a different type and with a different animation and battle, of course but the gist is that they are 150 power with 90 accuracy, and they make you unable to use an attack on the following turn. This isn't an overpowered move by any means, but it has situational use depending on the Pokemon that you put it on. In any case, just another cool example of the three starter typings having matching TMs five feet from each other on the map. And that'll do for today, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this clumping of tips, tricks, and just neat little details sprinkled throughout Pokemon Scarlet and Violet that you probably didn't know about. Let me know in the comments if you have any more that you think deserve to be shared with the world, and for now, I hope you enjoy your Pokemon journey. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is, uh, goodbye.